it never made sense for two real niggas to clash. You see what I'm saying? Two real niggas never clashed. If two real niggas ever clashed, then it's because of a fake nigga. You see what I'm saying? You got fake niggas out here trying to prove a point to another nigga that they didn't lie to about being the man. So then they go down a real nigga or they go snitch on a real nigga and have other people thinking he a real nigga. You see what I'm saying? That ain't real. Two real niggas never ever clash because they feel each other. They click from the gate. Oh, man, you a real nigga. Man, I feel you. All right, my nigga, breathe on. Live easy. I'm out. Peace. And then they go about their ways. Fake nigga, he going to be all in your business. Claiming he the mob. I'm the mob. Nigga. I'm rolling with y'all, nigga. I'm mob, nigga. I'm mob. But look at this. But in actuality, you kind of. You see what I'm saying? So our mob is totally different from a lot of other people's mobs. Um, we connect with a lot of people. We, we, we do this music shit. That's what we focus on. We focus on the legal life. We don't want to do nothing that's going to jeopardize uh, the youth or jeopardize us. You know what I'm saying? So we, you know, we grew up in the streets. We know what it takes to turn the streets around. We know what it takes to turn an individual from the streets around. You can't turn the streets around. That's a hard, that's a hard task. The streets going to be itself. But you can take the niggas out the street and, and, and show them another life. You know what I'm saying? God blessed us to make it this far to see another life. So now we got proof. You see what I'm saying? We can go back and tell these niggas, nigga, you can make a million dollars, nigga, off rapping or off music. But these niggas ain't going to believe it if we just sitting there telling these niggas from a distance and ain't really showing these niggas how to do it. This is a J Mix exclusive. All right. How did you feel when you heard some of your tracks on the Machiavelli and Dillinger EP that was put out by Daz? Well, um, I kind of expected it. I didn't expect it from, you know, nobody in general. I just knew that, okay, all his music going to start leaking out. Um, all the songs that I was telling people that, 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 that I was on, they, they, they might get a chance to hear it. It was kind of like, I was kind of, I was kind of a little upset because I was like, damn, why did you go do a nigga pop music like that? Man, put that shit out the right way and and let it grow like, you know what I'm saying? To, I mean, you know, that's Tupac, so it's going gonna, it's gonna to do what it do anyway. You know what I'm saying? But I was just like, damn, why are they putting this man, you know, music out? But then when I heard me on it, I was like, that's cool too, I'm, you know. But still, though, that ain't cool. Cause when I when I when I heard myself on it, I was like, oh, that's that song. I ain't heard that song in a minute. Cause you couldn't really never leave about the studio with copies. You know what I mean? So your songs that you did with somebody was just a, a, a myth to the people that you told until it was until they heard it. And the, these leaks started coming out after Suge Knight went to prison. It, do you feel that some artists were trying to that maybe weren't paid were getting some songs to put them out to try to get paid? Man, I believe it like that. I believe it. Um, this is just my opinion. I'm not saying it's true. Um, I believe you know when Pac died and all that went left field. People was like, "Oh, I got some of his music. I got some of his music. I got some of his music. Let me do this. Let me do this. Let me sell this. Let me sell his music. I can do this. I can make money." Me, on the other hand, I'm a different nigga. I'm going to keep it solid. I was like, hell no. Nah. I did what a nigga would do in the hood because it happened to me before. You see what I'm saying? I'm with one of my homeboys, and we riding, and some niggas get down on us, and they kill the nigga. But what I do, I return all the property that was left for my homeboy that I had at my shit and that we was riding with, I returned that to his mama because that's somebody's son. I'm somebody's son. I'm somebody's father. I'm somebody's brother. I'm somebody's uncle. You see what I'm saying? So somebody loves somebody. Whether somebody hates somebody, somebody loves somebody. So at that point, I thought the only thing to do was, okay, I can't go wrong letting his mama know that this is everything that he had, you know, before he got killed or whatever or whatnot. So that's what I did with the Tupac situation. When that, I wasn't like, 
I'm like, I come from the hood for real. Niggas done got killed on the side of me. Niggas done got killed in front of me. I done seen niggas get shot up. I done seen all that shit. So when Pac died, I was like, damn, another one of my niggas gone. Fuck. And then I had some songs left over that I knew should been have because I was the only one with the reels. So I said, okay, hold on. We're going to do this like this. I done got offered. Should offered to, you know what I'm saying, uh, buy the masters from me. I'm, nah, I'm cool. I done had priority records come at me, offer me thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars. And let us buy that. Nah, I'm cool. I'm not doing nothing with these songs until I talk to Mr. Phoenix Shakur. Even though Pac said, yo, these are your songs. This is for you. I'm not doing nothing with these songs because this is going to be my gift back to Tupac Mom. Hey, Moms, how you doing? He got two songs that Tupac left me. Uh, nobody else has it. There they go. That's the kind of type of nigga I am. And when I did that, I received my blessings from that. You see what I'm saying? Because everybody was talking about, oh, I'm not so, let me get the Tupac songs that you got, man. We, we'll cash you out and, uh, you know, that's it. Man, fuck y'all. I've been getting money from the street. I've been getting street money. So the money you niggas is offering me, I can turn around and go bust two, three moves and get that money and still have my same song. So what is you niggas talking about? Tell me something that's going to make me move. You see what I'm saying? So I didn't sell none of that. I waited till I got a hold of Tupac Moms and I gave it to her like, yo, Moms, this is this here. This, man, I, don't, I didn't do nothing with it. I wasn't going to do nothing with it until I talked to you. Here, here you go. Blase, blase, blase. She turned around and blessed me. She said, oh, nobody has these? I said, nope. She said, you was the only one with these? I said, yeah. She said, okay, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to pay you for them, keep you on it, and I'm going to put it out, and you can do whatever you want to with it after I put it out. You see what I'm saying? So when you be, that's solid. That's like some real shit. Like, that comes from street and biblical. Once you sacrifice everything, God will give you twice as more. You see what I'm saying? So that's what I did. I sacrificed everything. I was broke in a motherfucker. I was like, hold on, man. I'm broke in a motherfucker. Niggas asked me to buy this song. I was like, nah, can't do it. I'm going to sit on this. And I sat on it. And look how I am now. 16, 17 years later, and I'm still getting royalty checks from that album. Well put. Your sister's Keisha Cole, right? Most definitely. I've been told by some people that were in Death Row that she was actually around Death Row and even in Vegas the night that uh, the shooting. I brought her. I brought her around. The, I brought her around the whole Death Row camp. Introduced her to everybody. Um, introduced her to Hammer. Introduced her to Pac. Introduced her to Sure. Introduced her to everybody. Everybody that I got introduced to. See. Everybody that I got introduced to, I introduced her to. Yeah, she was real young at that at that time. Like she wasn't even uh, like she was barely singing. So I wanted her to get into singing. So I kept her around music and music people. Like yo, this is the way. This is you know learn from this. So I was doing songs with her and had her doing songs with um, a few local uh, Bay Area people um, as a start. You know, and um, but yeah, she was around. I uh, brought her around uh, a few times around the Death Row era uh, in camp. So. Yeah, that's, 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 that's a true statement. This is a J Mix exclusive. What up with Sean? Something is worth half a billion dollars. And you're tired of being harassed by the guy who runs it. Why not just kill him and take it from him? Assassination 3 really gives the backdrop. It really gives the um, story behind the story of what happened in those times what happened before, during, and after the shooting. Um, so, yeah, we're, we're definitely broadening the scope of the investigation with Part 3, but by the same token, we're not saying this is a grand conspiracy. This is not a whole bunch of conspirators that got together. This is about people who knew how the system worked and gamed it. They gamed the system. They took advantage of the system. They broke the rules of the system. They gave themselves immunity from prosecution. 
all of those things, people gamed the system. People actually thought they were getting over by not following the rules. And they gamed the system. And uh, Assassination 3 really deals with 